Hey everybody, Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Welcome aboard. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the uh, rust encapsulator that I've been using on my Connex. Now um, I'm going to end up wrapping my Connex with uh, earth bags and concrete. But one thing I want to do is, is make sure that the rust that's on it doesn't continue to creep. So I bought a product from Eastwood called Rust Encapsulator. My biggest motivation for that particular product is it has built-in UV on it. And here in Texas, uh, as you can see, I step on out of the sun. Oh my gosh, it's just beating me up already. So I'm doing something different than most people. I'm gonna go ahead and swivel. The so what I've done is I'm only chasing the rust because again, I'm, I'm gonna cover this all up. So I'm chasing the deep rust uh, around. Underneath it still needs it. You'll see that here's a spot that I missed entirely, right? So I'm only painting when I need to. <laughs> uh, because uh, it's boring for me. And um, I would get bored out of my mind. I put on my, uh, when I need 20 feet, I, I put on my respirator and I go and I paint 20 feet. Um, that's my methodology, you do you. But uh, one part of my uh, methodology, uh, of course it keeps it fun for me. I'm, I'm moving from project to project to project. But each one of these particular patches at times, and people would say, oh, it, it flakes off. I'm here to tell you that that is not flaking off. This stuff I did early, early on. And then as you go around each window, as I cut out each window, it's in its, its own uh, moment. There's a whole gap there that I haven't painted yet at all. Uh, so I'm still working on uh, the weatherizing of the windows. So I'm ch chasing those. You'll see I painted up as far as my ladder would reach or my arm would, and I, I didn't do that. The way the rust uh, encapsulator works is it starves out the uh, existing rust so it can't get oxygen anymore. Uh, the beauty of Core 10 Steel is, uh, assuming it's not a constant presence of moisture, especially salty moisture, the uh, iron oxide is so dense that it, it tends to just make a patina and stop. So this was all scratched up in a harbor, right? And you'll see that it's created a rust surface and it's running down. But that rust surface itself is going to help encapsulate the rust and stop it. In addition, I am uh, I go back in and I paint it then with, and there are some deep ones in here. You can see that there's some deep ones. I paint it with the uh, inhibitor. So there's a deep one. Now, I do not knock the rust off with a wire brush. I do not do a lot of surface prep. I just paint right over the top of it. As a young man, I was always told with the rust encapsulators, you need the rust to activate it. I think people who have this rust uh, inhibitors flake off, they have it flake off because they're overworking their surface. You need a little grit and the rust gives you that little grit. My advice is, is don't wire brush that off. I, obviously, if it was big flakes, I would. And then, of course, the auto guys, uh, auto body guys, they don't like rust encapsulators because uh, you can't paint well easily over it. And that is true. That, it makes a, a binding surface that denies oxygen, which means the top coats you put, put over the top of it don't have a tooth and they can't grab in. So people that complain about rust encapsulators, I think, one, they're overcleaning it. They're not leaving a little rust to activate it. Or two, their final application is some kind of a premium coat. Um, and the rust encapsulator will push a premium coat off unless you do, do additional sanding. My application, looky here, I just want to stop it. Uh, the roof's done. Most of this is done. The underside needs to be done. Um, chasing around zero flaking. My Eastwood product here that has the UV on it does a great job. Look at this side. I, I haven't even started this side. Well, I'm not working this side, right? So uh, I'll get to it. And you can see where the containers have banged. Right there's the middle where fork trucks were going or whatever, and they kept banging the fork truck uh, uh, head protection on them. So uh, the doors were super rusty. My doors need a little help and love, and I'll work on that. But I, I've just chased it. So the video today wasn't just the outside, but it was all of the inside. So. Um, all I did was any place I found a bit of rust, I went ahead and chased it. Once I get the insulation in on the, like on this side, this bubble wrap, that is going to prevent a, the differential between the metal and the uh, inside. So I won't get the moisture buildup on the wall. 
which will further reduce right the amount of uh, rust I get so that's all I did and uh, you can go ahead and watch my video and and do the same I'm shooting for a thousand year home so uh, I know that the paint is just an extra step and it's expensive it was like hundred fifty dollars a gallon uh, one gallon has done all of this uh, and I still have a little bit left so um, I'm thinking one gallon might get me the underside of both of these, although there's a lot more rust underneath it. I'll cross that bridge after I put a foundation in, and, uh, you know, I can lay down without the spiders harassing me. But the rest of this video will be about Eastwood and uh, how I apply the, uh, the uh, application and nothing fancy, and it went super fast. And I'm still doing it as I get to the spot. I point paint it, um, and I haven't had a single bit of problem with that as well. All right, enjoy. Hey, it's Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So, uh, in true form, this uh, the name of this channel is Thousand Years Homes, and everything I do, all the decisions I make, and trying to make for uh, to make a home that'll last a thousand years. Now, uh, it's a pretty low risk proposition for me because I sure won't be here in a thousand years, but. Uh, I am doing that. So I've started out with two frames uh, and I'm pretty far away from the coast. So uh, two shipping container frames and I'm going to wrap these frames in uh, an earth bag is what I've decided. Um, uh, to, acting as the rebar for the earth bag. But make, let me swivel. To make it last a thousand years, even though this is core 10 steel, uh, before I do the insulation, you can see that I'm, I'm chasing a little bit of rust. You can see a little bit of rust right there so i'm chasing that little bit of rust now this is core 10 it's supposed to rust into a patina so um you know right there was where it was dented by uh other containers being stacked on it and so on the top of this container eventually i'll pour concrete the dents won't matter right but uh, you can see the crease there has um a little bit of rust but overall it's very rust free there's a little bit underneath the um, other container underneath this container there's um, a little bit more rust uh, where it's been sitting on the ground but it's still not bad the core 10 does hold up so uh, I could probably get by without doing the painting and I'll cover the uh, what paint I'm using but uh, this paint converts the the uh, iron rust fe3 into fe4 which is a black uh, oxide which is even more impervious so um the the paint is epoxy that's in existence and then i'm i'm touching up with the uh the black uh conversion paint uh which is also uh epoxy but it does convert the rust in order to get a thousand years i think if your container was clean and neat uh you could probably get away with not doing this step uh, the other thing is, is um, this this particular bedroom area will have a bathroom in the middle where the uh, the windows are. So I'm expecting a little bit of moisture. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how well the reflective foil will hold up. Uh, then I'll do a layer of rock wool, and then I'll do two layers of five eighths inch acoustic drywall with acoustic uh, paint. Um, I'm sorry, a caulk in between the layers. So. Uh, but um, the goal is to keep the moisture off of the metal as well and i think i'll accomplish that with the rock wall but uh so the paint is an additive barrier to get me to the thousand year home so uh I, unlike uh other folks that are building custom homes to get into them as rapidly as possible i'm stuck out here it's 107 in this container right now and i'm committed to it you can't hear my trucks running the generator on the outside but uh the uh certainly uh the moisture and the decisions and the factor uh all leading up to me making thousand year decisions for this home and uh hopefully these this painting is not in vain but uh well you see see i got half of it done uh both walls and ceiling and uh this little video is just me wrapping up the other half like, oh, like and subscribe. I need friends out here in the middle of nowhere. Let, see my view? That's, uh, that's not city living out there. That is a beautiful view, but uh, I need folks that will, will come along with me on this thing. And I wish them, them clouds would drop some rain. So, but every view is the same. But like and subscribe, uh, all my decisions that I'm doing here, I'm trying to make a thousand year decision for a home. So we'll see how close I'll get to that.
All right, so here's my sped up version of me. Pleased to announce that I've lost about 15 pounds since this due to the heat and not being out there. So this has been a pretty good event for me. So I, the Da Vinci ceiling that I'm doing here is an abstract Pollock. Uh, people probably won't uh, appreciate my uh, artistic integrity, but years from now, a thousand years from now, they'll be cutting these ceilings out to display, I'm sure. So what I'm being driven by is that I'm finding any rust and I'm, I'm converting it with the, the paint. A smarter idea would have been for me to pour a little bit out into a smaller cup. That way I'd have had less vapors going. But in addition to the open windows, I also have a big fan on the other end pushing things through. Uh, very, It's still hot in here. Um, that's just the shorts and the t-shirt. But um, it took me, you know, an hour to get through, and I just paint what I need. The other half I painted as I went. So um, all I'm doing is just tracking down. And I like that. It was easy to do. I recommend. I'm going to repurpose another video clip that I did in the past. Here's the Eastwood Rest Encapsulator Plus in matte black. So uh, this was this one gallon was expensive, but um, it did it, everything inside of that container, the roof as well as the outer well. So you can see that this encapsulator, it's got a aluminum oxide in it, and it has various components in it that convert the FE3 into FE4 bonding the oxygen to the surface. This makes it really good. In addition, Eastwood recently changed the formula on this to include it's a lot stronger. You can't scratch it easier. I can't scratch it casually with a ladder, so it's super strong. The heat resistance, I hope my container never gets to 350, but it feels like that from time to time. And I am not at it any thinner. Uh, I'm not going to spray it. I might spray it underneath the container but I don't like breathing those fumes. They are not good for you. And I am wearing a respirator of sorts when I do that, plus a lot of ventilation. Underneath the container, I may not have that capability. So I might paint it for a day or two and stop, paint it for a day or two. So it's well shaken. And then I crack the top. I should have poured it out in a smaller container, of course, but I was lazy the one day. I did buy direct from the manufacturer and it, no affiliate. This is a recommendation, so great product, and this is the right way to take care of your container.